Hey there, this is Niels Beardfoot and today we are making this Eagle Warrior belt. As always, we start by printing out the pattern, cut away the edges, tape it together and cut it out in detail. Additionally, we need a belt base from 3.5mm batch tent leather. For the upper pieces you want to cut a strap with the same width as the belt base and then put on the pattern pieces and mark the edge line and cut it out in detail. For the decoration pieces you need a strap, punch some holes in it and start with the weave-in technique. You want to make a tip on the edges of your lace and then pull both sides from the bottom through the first hole. Next you want to pull the left lace piece through the first hole on the right. Put on the other lace piece to hold it in place. Then on the back side you go back to the hole you just came from and then go to the second hole on the right. This is the start. Then you just want to go back one hole and on the front side go two holes in advance on the right side to get a repeating pattern. At the end you want to do it just at the beginning, you go through your last hole and then go twice through the same hole again. Depending on your hole size you want to use an awl to get some room for more lace. Now for the next step you definitely need a lace needle, this one you can just screw on. The first weave is very important. You want to go below the first lace. This will make everything later on easier. So with every other time you go through, you just have to go underneath the second lace and not underneath the first and the third. Just at the beginning, get some room and go through the first hole again. Make always sure your top grain is upwards. So now you go over the first lace, underneath the second and then over the third and in the hole. And from this point on, it's just repeat and proceed. Again, you go over the first lace, underneath the second and over the third, into the hole. When you are at the very end, you want to go again through the same hole, just as we did already, and weave over the first and under the second. To hold the ends in place, you want to go underneath one of the laces, and then create a loop, and go with the other end through the loop, and tighten the loop to hold everything in place. And then you cut away any excess leather.
Next you want to moisten all the pattern pieces from both sides. Use the moisture to transfer the lines from the pattern on the leather and when it's dry enough we can start with our swivel knife and tooling. I wanted to go for a more 3D skull so I beveled on the edge and thinned out the leather on the skull at the back side. With the leather still moist I can use a bone folder to stretch the leather towards the top side. Then I transfer the skull pattern a little bit smaller twice on leather with the nose as one piece cut it up and glue it together. This will give me the body underneath the leather to shape around the skull. Get the body piece behind the leather and then start shaping around it the skull. It does not need to be perfect yet. When you got the rough shape, you want to glue the skull on from behind. When it dried a little bit, you can start shaping the complete skull with tools, your fingers and everything that you want. In addition, I added some camouflage tools along the border. And gave the piece a little more rough look with a natural stone and a hammer. And also some cuts with a swivel knife. Then we can start putting on some dye. Put on two coats of resist to prepare it for antique gel and let it dry completely. If you put the resist on the edges you can also use the moisture to burnish. For some shiny colors I use the resist together with a resin powder to get the decoration a little bit more touch. When everything dried, you can put on a coat of antique gel and wipe away all the excess. With another coat of resist, you make sure you don't lose your antique gel. To get the belt to a size that is fitting for you, I recommend using a belt you're already wearing and use it as measurement. You want to mark your most recent used hole. Use an oblong punch to punch the holes for your buckle. Put closure and the tip of the belt on the base and mark the position as well as the very center. From this on you can make additional marks to know where to put your lashes next. Those you want to prepare now, cut them to length and punch a hole and thin out one side. Mark where exactly you have to punch a hole, punch it and use a rivet to hold the lash in position. Make sure that you put your lashes on the correct side of the belt, it is meant to be the lower side. I actually screwed that up. I use scrap pieces of fur, so I put on the belt base. I mark where to cut and cut the fur a little bit smaller. So the edges of the belt piece will stay free from the fur leather. Then you want to mark where to put the pieces, put on some contact cement and put it on. Shave away a little bit of the end of the fur, so the next fur piece can overlap here. I recommend 
to sew on the fur at the edge line between two pieces. You want to check where you have to cut away a little bit of fur, do so and then put on contact cement and glue on the one centimeter wide straps along the edges. Take your time here and try to make it as exact as possible. Here I noticed I put the lashes on the wrong side, so I put additional lashes on the bottom side here. Now you want to glue on the tip and the closure, so cut away a little bit of the fur there and glue them on. Rivets will help to strengthen the construction. Now it's time for the most laborious part. You want to punch holes along the whole belt and sew them. Cut away all the excess leather along the edge and use sandpaper to make sure it's very smooth but don't cut in the lashes. Then you want to bevel the edge, re-dye it and put on some resist and burnish it. Punch some holes for the buckle to fit in on the other side. To make sure your keeper is fitting perfectly, you want to put the belt together, put it around and mark exactly where you have to sew both ends together. Also I recommend sewing it a little bit on the belt so it does not get pushed around. How to craft this bird skull, I got a whole video about it and I will link it on the top right corner. You want to punch some holes at both sides of the skull and that's where the attachment for the skull will be placed. So shave away a little bit of fur at the center of the belt. Mark where you have to punch your holes, punch them and use rivet to hold the piece in place. Use some screw rivets to hold the skull in place. Definitely use screw locker. From this position you can now place your decoration pieces. Mark where you want to put them at the back side and also where you have to punch some holes to sew it on. Punch those and sew it. So I punch two holes at the top and the bottom and I go through it multiple times and Keep it very loose at the beginning and then tighten it afterwards. Now the last step, you want to take some lace, pull it through the lashes and tie a knot at the end. For the lower part I kept it a little bit loose, so this is where I can later on put in some things and hang them on this lace. And that's it. 
you're done. I hope you like it. Leave a comment if you did and a like. And check out my patterns, my other videos. See you guys next time. Ciao.